Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and we got a great show tonight. If you got to understand, voiceover is a business, and we have a great guest tonight. Our good friend Jody Krangle is joining us from the Great White North, which apparently is quite white and very much in the North. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about audio branding and good business practices and what it takes to really succeed. Right, Jody? Say hi. Hello. Okay. <laughs> You all set, George? All right, I'm you're ready to side. go. Okay. VoiceOver Body Shop is coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Yes, it is. Yes. Coming from the championship city of Los Angeles, where most people <laughs> are like, the Rams. Yay. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I, I think the, the halftime show has, was for a target audience. It certainly One, was. Los Angelinos. Yes. And two, millennials. Yes. And that's, or, or Gen X's too. And that yeah. definitely was me. I, I enjoyed the halftime show. I have to yeah. I, 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 my, my I had wife the sound mentioned... system cranking. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't understand the word they were saying. Oh, that. well, it's, you know. it's, that's the, yeah. It was, it was a target audience. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating to note that, uh, you know, it was, um, yeah, Mar Marcy was like, have you ever noticed that the, that most of the Super Bowl entertainer, halftime entertainer are all over 40? It's interesting to, <laughs> this time, it, is that in general or is that this one? I think in general. I mean, think about some of the people in the minute. Anyway, yeah. we're going to talk yeah. about voiceover tonight. We got other things yeah. to talk about. We are looking forward to getting back here in the studio all together pretty soon because, I miss being able to look up the nostrils of a lot of prominent voice actors. <laughs> um, <laughs> make things a little bit more interesting. Yeah. But we're going to talk about the voiceover business tonight. If you've got a question for our guest or for George and I for Tech Talk a little bit later on, throw it in the chat room. Supposedly, Jeff Holman is back there. He and is. Typing everything out. I and have verified it or, the fact that he is here. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, so why don't we introduce our guest, as Mishka apparently wants to get into the studio here. <laughs> uh, providing voiceovers for TV and radio commercials, corporate and industrial narrations, documentaries and in-show narrations, political ads, and anything else, Jody, Jody Krangle has voiced national and international commercial campaigns for companies like Bissell, Kraft, Capri Sun, and Visit Orlando, narrated documentaries, corporate and web explainer videos for Fortune 500 companies, and has, and has been the narration voice for shows on both Slice Network in Canada and HGTV here in the U.S. So if you're ever buying stuff for, no, HGTV is like the Discovery Channel. Uh, like HG that. is Home and Garden, I think, Home right? and Garden, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you had all the home improvement shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's also, she also has a new podcast that she's really been uh, making a lot of on audio branding, the hidden gem of marketing. And uh, how do you get all that work? Let's talk to her about it. Let's welcome 
Jody Krangle. Hey, dear, how you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. It's good to see you guys. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's been Hello. a long time. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm great. I'm so glad we can have you on because we've really been trying to concentrate in getting people to understand that voiceover is an entrepreneurial business. This is yeah. not show business. <laughs> And you know where everybody's like, "Oh, I'm going to be in voiceover. I'm going to get an agent." And they're like, "That's that's not how you do it." You know, people making the big, big, big bucks, they're movie stars. Mm. And uh, you know, you can move up there, but you got to start somewhere. But uh, anyway, y your journey into voiceover started doing narration for the blind, and now mm -hmm. it seems you do everything. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you, you know, how you drifted into voiceover back in the 90s and <laughs> how you got where you are today? Well, I first heard about voiceover uh, in 95, 96, when I was volunteering my time to read, I guess they were magazine articles at the time, onto reel-to-reel -reel tape. <laughs> it was actually reel-to-reel <laughs> -reel tape, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I enjoyed the tech almost as much as I did the voicing. So it was a nice challenge and I did that for around a year. Um, it percolated a little while because I was actually self-employed doing SEO and internet marketing. Um, SEO search engine optimization, just for those who are unfamiliar. <laughs> like it, like in the late nineties or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah. You're way ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was doing that from 95 <laughs> until 2007 when I started doing full-time voiceover. So, yeah, it's mm. been a while. And, uh, and yeah, it was a nice progression because I think it helped me understand the business end of things before I even got into the voiceover world. Because I was already self-employed. For me, it was just a focus switch. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. See, now that makes sense. And I think a lot of people, again, don't get that. that this is a business. You've got to be able to do all these different things in order to get people to hire you. Yeah. And it's not, it's no one's responsibility except yours. This is very true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you, you better be responsible about that. Uh, at the very least, remember to invoice. <laughs> you don't point. get paid unless you invoice. <laughs> That's true. Do, do it quickly. Because yes. You don't do it two months later or yeah. something like that. So clearly success in voiceover requires a good business sense. But how have you moved your career along using good business practices? What are some examples of that? Aside from invoicing immediately. Yeah, and stuff like that. I, I think being efficient um, in my work, one of the ways that I have differentiated myself in what I do is I tend to work on projects that are five minutes of finished audio or less. So what that means is that I can very quickly get to a, a, a potential client or a client's project really quickly. I can get it done in a half an hour often for them. So, you know, there's a combination of that. It takes coaching in order to be able to get there that quickly. But also you need to not be putting out fires every second of the day. <laughs> Right. So if you're ahead of the curve and you have your day, uh, if you make sure that the projects that you do are small enough, this is just how I've done it. I'm not saying this is the best for everybody. But for me, if I make sure that those projects are small enough, then it means that I don't have this huge hundred hour e-learning project looming over my shoulder when someone comes to me for a commercial project. And I mean, for me, it it just it made total sense because I really enjoy having many different projects in a day because that to me is more exciting. Um, lots of people have different things that they enjoy. Lots of people enjoy e-learning. Lots of people love audiobooks. All the power to them. They can have all mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I give all of that away. <laughs> uh, but I really love the corporate narration, anthem videos, and uh, the commercial stuff. That's really my bread and butter, and I love doing it. What, what does that really involve? I mean, I, I'm, I've done a few of them, but you know, what, what have you experienced in doing the, the, the corporate narrations and the anthem stuff? And... Yeah, I think it depends on what the company is, obviously. Uh, different companies have different feelings. For instance, you're going to sound different with healthcare than you would with finance. But a lot of them have that same kind of um, approachability, but gravitas, just a little bit of oomph behind the voice. And so that is something that I, I excel at. That's really where my happy place is. <laughs> 
So I do a lot of healthcare. I do a lot of finance. I do some tech. Um, and I can do a lot of the, the happy, um, retail as well. I do a lot of that and the luxury stuff, which I really love doing as well. So there's a whole lot of really interesting work in those different genres that I like playing in. <laughs> How do you go about getting that kind of work though? I think most people don't understand. Well, now I'm going to be a voice actor. How do I go out and find that stuff? Cause it's generally not agents finding that for you. No, not usually. And in the beginning, agents aren't really going to help you get where you need to go in order to have regular clients because they're not going to look at you until they know you can make money. <laughs> right. I mean, they're interested in it's a partnership, right? They're interested in making money from you because otherwise, why be an agent? <laughs> so. Uh, if you are going out and getting your own work, and that can mean a whole bunch of different ways these days. I mean, back in the day, and Dan, you will probably remember this when back in voices, the day, yes. back in the day, yeah, yeah. voices.com used to be the place to go, right? Voices.com, voice one, two, three, yeah. um, um, Bidalgo a little slightly more yeah, recently we, than that, we, but we built our businesses on those. Exactly. Yeah. So when Voices.com used to allow us to contact the client directly, <laughs> that yeah. was a lot easier. Voice123 does allow that to happen. Um, I will say that a lot of my early career started on those platforms, and um, I made those clients my own clients and brought them off the platforms. That was... Exactly. Yeah. Just by giving them good service. I mean, that's, you know, making sure that it was easy for them to just call me and have it done. Like, no muss, no fuss. It's done. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to call anyone else. I'm the one you need. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I, that's what I would say, too. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, I'm going to make your job easy. You know, you're going to take this audio and it's, you're not going to have to do anything to it. It'll just be, just plug it into whatever it is you're making. Yep, Like exactly. a PowerPoint just presentation or something. Make it easy for them. Yeah. yeah. Once again, our guest is Jody Krangle. We're talking about business practices for voiceover, but we're also going to talk a little bit about audio branding and what that means. Uh, so if you've got any questions for Jody, again, throw them in the chat room. Jeff Holman is sitting back there somewhere and he's going to relay those questions to us a little bit later on in this show. So mm -hmm. make sure you're, you're, if you got a question, I mean, I think once we start talking about the, the audio branding thing, it may trigger a few questions in, in a couple of people's minds. So when we say audio branding, because you've got, it's what your podcast is about. And yeah. you've, been, you've been, you know, putting out a lot of podcasts and talking on a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little about what you mean by audio branding? Sure. Um, I'll give you the definition that the International Sound Awards uses. Okay. And they call it a, a, a brand sound that represents the identity and values of a brand in a distinctive manner. The audio logo, branded functional sounds, brand music, or the brand voice are characteristic elements of audio branding. So it's a big umbrella of sound that is associated specifically with a company's DNA. And this can mean a whole bunch of different things. It can mean a combo of music, of voice, of sounds, of the, it could be like the sound that your GE kettle makes when it's ready. Like it, it could be the sound of a luxury car door slamming. Like <laughs> there's all sorts of different things that this could mean. And it's all part and parcel of who that company is. And it lets people know in seconds exactly who they are. That's how powerful audio branding really is because it gets that message across emotionally, deeply, and quickly. Hmm. So how do you get that across to your potential clients and your existing clients? What do you? I make a podcast about it. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Duh. That's what I do. <laughs> See, the point we always talk about, you, just because you can doesn't mean you should make a podcast unless I mean, you have true. something <laughs> to, to say. say. Yeah. Or yes. in Judy's, Judy's case, something to learn, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm learning at the same time. I mean, the people that I have on the show all are really knowledgeable about the various different parts of this and there are so many different parts and when i talk about audio branding it's only it, it's not only about brand sounds it's also about how it heals us i talk about the power of sound in in the podcast so not only am i talking about the advertising and the marketing but i'm also talking about how sound affects us in our daily lives 
And a lot of that is healing. A lot of that is um, uh, what music does to our moods. Um, there's a, how you can influence what you taste by what you hear. <laughs> it's a really bunch of interesting things. And how important is sound in our lives that, it, I mean, without it, I, I'm going to, I say this a few times on some other podcasts, but um, if you're talking about movies, for instance, in, in film, if you turn off that sound and you don't listen to the sound, you're going to know what's going on in that movie, but you're not really going to care about it. That's the thing. The sound gives you emotional context. The music, the sound effects, everything that you are hearing is giving you the emotional context of that movie. So you're not going to be moved to tears just by watching something on a screen. You're going to be moved to tears when you hear the music that goes along with that scene and the sound design that goes along with that scene and the spoken words that go along with it. It's so much an, an emotional landscape that we just unconsciously use in our lives and experience in our lives. And when it's gone, then we realize. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I just heard that on the, I just heard that I was watching some random sort of viral YouTube video explainer today. And it was, they mentioned how one of the reasons why airline food tastes relatively bad to the passengers is because of the noise levels on the airplane affects the way you taste the food. Yeah, it's so true. And I was like, whoa. I mean, yeah. I thought I knew about stuff. Till our I heard our that. senses all work together. Our brains are weird. <laughs> They say and, if you want it to taste better, put on noise canceling headphones and you'll have a better tasting meal. Or listen to certain sounds or, better, or yeah. certain music. You know, if you're if you're in a French restaurant and you're listening to top forty music for some yeah, strange yeah. reason, it makes you think like you're in a hole in the wall kind of like uh, mm -hmm. place that doesn't care, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in a French restaurant and they're playing French music, the type of music that you would hear if you're sitting in a cafe in Paris, <laughs> mm -hmm. that makes you just taste the food better. It just makes everything better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'll remember that when I'm sitting in a cafe in Paris this spring. Um, Enjoy. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm looking, really looking forward to it. We're, yeah. we're, we're doing a cruise from Lyon to Paris. In wow, Maryland. that'll be fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, once again, we're talking with Jody Krangle. We're talking about audio branding and good voiceover practices. So I think people need to understand that it's not necessarily our job to do that. Now, you you talked about a lot of different things that, mm -hmm. you know, that what an audio brand sounds like to a particular client. Generally, it's not the voice actor that does that. It's usually a good sound designer. I mean, you watch a movie and you know, we're talking about sound effects and all the things that, that go into it. Not really our job for the most part, but how as voice actors do we affect that? And how do we get that across to our clients as to what it is that they want? Well, we are need? hired usually yeah. because we have a certain voice type and we fit that type and that is what they hear as being the voice of their brand. And we have to understand that we are a part of their audio brand, that once we get into a certain rhythm with them, once we become that voice for them, that it's going to be something that we are very aware of. Um, and that and that they need to be aware of because it's important if uh, you know, God forbid they want to change their audio brand, then that voice changes as well, or the tone changes. Right. But we are a part of that. We're not the audio brand, and it's not necessarily for us to make an audio brand. It's it's for us to be a part of theirs. So it's it's more for them to understand that their audio is important and the voice is a part of that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's always been an important thing. It's like, yeah. you know, they, they, they may change. You, you might be the voice of a, of a, of a brand for many, many years. And, and then they write to you and say, we're going in another direction. It happens. It, it happens, happens all the time. Yeah, it's, totally. Know. I understand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I get why they would do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that we just need to be aware of as a profession that we are adding to their audio brand and we are helping to 
let people know who they are in a very quick amount of time. Right. And that's why we were chosen. So whoever, you know, whatever job you're doing for whatever client you're doing that job for, it's because they decided that your voice fit their brand. And that was a conscious decision. Absolutely. Usually it's a yeah, conscious, conscious decision. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, not from the think, end client, yeah. then at least from someone in the chain. <laughs> yeah. So someone in the casting yes. the office is like, yeah, that's what we're looking for. And yeah. that, that's what they do professionally. That's mm -hmm. their job to do that. And yeah. not necessarily our job is to be ourselves. And yeah. you know, and then do we fit into that particular brand? Yeah. Uh, again, if you got a question for Jody, throw it in the chat room right now. Uh, now, you've, you're doing this podcast. Tell us a little bit about how you started that and what kind of stuff is on there and why people should listen. <laughs> well, you know, I started another podcast before it. Um, in the summer of 2019, I was doing something called Jody's Silver Linings, with which uh, Bev Standing came up with that name. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just some common wisdom stuff because I'm older. <laughs> and... Uh, there are some things that I wanted to say. And I did that. And then um, I was a part of a business mastermind and they were telling all of us that really we should have a podcast, that this was something you needed to do. And so I jumped in whole hog without even really, you know, stopping to think about what I wanted the end result to be. <laughs> and the end result was that I started getting people asking me to be a life coach. <laughs> and that was oh not what I was hoping. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really not my plan. Um, so I stopped that podcast in October of 2019. And in November of 2019, I started up audio branding. And it was really from a conversation that I had in this business mastermind. There's a fellow that I was talking with. His name is Vincent Puglisi. And he has a, um, a mastermind, a group, they're called the it's total life freedom is what it is. So it's really for entrepreneurs and people who are trying to quit their nine to five job and live, you know, a, a life of time and, and, you know, time freedom, basically, um, and location freedom as well, which is something that most voiceover people already have, but improving where you are at in that, uh, in that business process was kind of what I was after. And uh, he suggested that I talk about something I was passionate about. And I'm passionate about sound. I've been a singer. I, I had a songwriting website for years and years. Um, I love everything about voiceover. It's so much fun. And, and I just enjoy using my voice in a way that affects people. So for me, it was kind of a no brainer to sort of explore where audio goes. <laughs> And, and on a more broad spectrum than just the advertising marketing, it's called audio branding. But really, I talk about the general power of sound. So mm -hmm. I talk about all sorts of different things. And, uh, and I have clubhouse discussions on them as well. So it's, it's really become very fulfilling. And uh, it's been a little, well, it's been over two years. And I just hit the 50,000 download mark. So like just a couple that? of days yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, take you a while to catch us, but you know, <laughs> yeah. we're up to 350,000. Oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> you've been going for 11 years though. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I have a little ways to go. <laughs> well, speaking of where audio goes, yeah. this is something that you wouldn't notice possibly, Jody, because you're monitoring us, but not, uh, not yourself. Mm -hmm. When your phone receives a message and vibrates, that vibration is transmitted through your desktop, through the oh. microphone arm into the microphone. Oh, nice. And we hear it okay. quite yes. handsomely. I will move that. <laughs> I didn't okay. hear it, but then again, My I'm apologies. Going down. I'm listening on these huge biodynamic DT7. <laughs> they're like, yeah. That are, you know, that's, okay. that's me, right? I'm it being, still I'm being vibrates, picky. but it should not be on the table anymore. <laughs> yeah. But you so, know, yes. that's one of those things. <laughs> At least you're busy. Before the show, yeah. I wanted to add, I was. Before the show, we were talking about animation. Not, automation. Not animation, automation. Automation, yeah, okay. Um, and how much, of, how much of what you do in your operations, I get a little obsessed about the operations of a business, having done this for so long myself, mm -hmm. running my own business, and how to, when you add people versus software versus tools, how, um, what are some things that you rely on being automated and things that you would not dare completely allow to automation and you want to be more involved with uh, manually 
Well, I do not automate my invoicing. Mm -hmm. So I keep track of that and I send out my invoice when I submit the audio to the client. So how I never would wait. You? How would you actually yeah. automate yeah. invoicing? And I guess I could have someone else do it for me, maybe. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, technically, I guess I could, but it's but you so easy. Feel, you feel <laughs> like you want to, that comes from you, from the desk of Jody. Yeah, exactly. From, I want to be involved in that, and yeah. I want to make sure that it goes out the minute that I deliver the audio. Mm -hmm. So I don't forget, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's the idea. So it just goes out yeah. immediately. They know it's coming immediately, and <laughs> and that's the end of that. Yeah. But, what sort of things do you automate then? Um, I use Gmail for my uh, my email, and mm -hmm. I will occasionally snooze things that I don't need in that mm. exact moment because I'm very um, picky about what is left in my inbox. I'm one of those people who starts to like my shoulders start to weigh down when I get too many things in my inbox. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I'm zero inbox. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of why I do the five minutes of finished of finished audio or less projects because then I know I can get them out of my inbox quickly. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it all yeah. feeds into my own neuroses. <laughs> yeah. Which but, we all yeah, have. Yeah. We, which we all have, exactly. Uh, but I, I know that for myself, I'm very much an introvert, and I need that time to replenish my energy. So if there's too much weighing down on me, I feel like I can't replenish. And it's something that I fight against on a regular mm -hmm. basis. So I make sure that I have space in between my... Uh, jobs that I have space in between my podcast interviews, either being on a podcast or uh, interviewing someone else. I make sure that I have that little built in time of peace and quiet because otherwise I can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah. So that's just me. I mean, lots of people operate in a completely different way. But yeah, automating that um, snooze button, thinking about it for that two seconds that I need to know when am I going to need to see this? Yeah. And then just getting rid of it and knowing that it'll pop up when I need it again. Do you ever so, use the send later button? You know, I haven't. I'm not, I, I don't know why, really. I, I, I love I just, that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I use it a lot. <laughs> Only you there, would think of that. Yeah. <laughs> if you're There's, sitting up, I mean, it's if you're sitting up at like 11 o'clock at some weird hour, answering a whole bunch of emails. Yeah. Sometimes morning, I don't yeah. want my clients to think I'm available. At 11 that is a good at night. point. That is a really good point. Uh, yeah. And boundaries way, are important. <laughs> yeah. Another way I'll use it. I'm saying it right here, folks. So you'll yep. know. Yep. If if you send an email and I reply, if you send another one, you will not hear a reply from me. Unless it's really like super time critical. You probably won't hear from me for a few more hours. And it's not because it didn't reply. It's because I replied later. I did a send it later. <laughs> Because That's I don't good... want to create an email conversation, mm -hmm. which gen so when you're trying to mill through your your inbox, if you have this one that keeps new, new read, unread, yes. unread, unread, you're like, no, stop, you got to yeah, stop it. A little frustrating. So that, that's what I, you can snooze later. That's fine too. You can just snooze it and answer it later. And that would yeah. be fine too. Well, it's just well that's what I do because it. I don't yeah. even want to deal with it until exactly. <laughs> right that day. No, it's the same idea. It's yeah. just a different tool to do this for the same to the same end. Yeah. But I generally answer my email in like seconds. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, I can't so, stop myself. Yeah, it, it'd be midnight. Oh, okay. And wife's like, "What are you writing to at midnight?" Yeah, yeah. I, I'm Somebody the same way, China. Dan. It's awful. Yeah. Have you my ever husband gotten does the uh, same thing? He's like, I, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I heard. Have you ever heard of a technique? If it, do you do you ever go on real vacations, Jody? Like not take my gear yeah, with gear, me, yeah, or no. You know, no I email. have, I have. Um, it's hard. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I have done it. There's, there used to be before in the before times. The before times. <laughs> um, there used to be a uh, music convention that I would go to in Atlanta, and I would take off two weeks. So we would be driving. And we'd be driving from Toronto all the way to Athens, Alabama, and then Athens, Alabama to Atlanta, and and then back home. So a lot of that is in the car, and I'm not going to be doing work in the car. I probably could, <laughs> but, 
but, but I really decided, don't want need, to. Yeah, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's eight hours in the car. I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. So when I'm doing that two week trip, usually I will be available on certain days during that vacation, but mm. I will not be available at other days. Mm. Like my driving days, I just take off and say I am not available. And then when I'm in a hotel and I'm staying there for five days. I'm okay with doing auditions or whatever emergency might come up. But, you know, my mm-hmm. clients understand that it's for emergency use only. And You'd like to think that. Well, <laughs> yeah, most of them do. Most of them do. So, yeah, it's mm-hmm. it just, it, it varies. Yeah. I try. Boundaries. I try. <laughs> the, the boundaries thing is such a, it's a very delicate thing because you really do want your clients to feel like they're, they're that you value them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, and and you always want to make them feel like their their needs are going to be met, um, and but you also know you're one person serving you know hundreds of people. And well, so what I say in my auto reply, thing. yeah, the auto reply is a good thing in in Gmail as well. And what I say in the auto reply is that um, I'm available for emergencies. But if I get my vacation, I come back refreshed and do better work for everyone. <laughs> Ooh, good point. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Jody Krangle about audio branding and good business practices uh, for all of you freelance voice actors out there uh, watching Voice Over Body Shop because that's what we talk about. Anyway, we're going to take a quick little break right now. Again, if you've got a question for Jody about all the stuff that we're talking about, throw it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook or on YouTube, or wherever it is that you're watching this show live, and you get the chance to interact with our guest. Throw it in there right now, and we'll get to those questions in just a little bit. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after these important messages. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Now, at VoiceOver Essentials, it's the legend reimagined. The MicPort Pro 3.0 brings incredible new features, all in the handheld, self-powered package the MicPort Pro has always been known for, like a new mic preamp with 65 dB of crystal clear gain, USB-C jacks, and a stunning headphone amplifier with a super convenient gain switch. You've no doubt heard of or recorded with the MicPort Pro. The MicPort Pro Breakthrough Audio Interface connected any studio quality microphone to a micro digital interface. This newest iteration of the legendary USB MicPort Pro turns your phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop into a professional recording studio. Smaller than most microphones, it's feature rich, easy to use, and travel friendly. And right now, VoiceOver Essentials is paying the shipping in the continental US. And they're including one of their ever-popular VO caps for a limited time. Get it now at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in VoiceOver or to change something about your VoiceOver career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in VoiceOver. 
If you go to voheroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back with Jody <laughs> Krangle, and we're talking about uh, audio branding and good voiceover business practices, because Jody has, you've been doing this, yeah, you said you started doing voiceover really in 2007, when, you know, when the wave of everybody trying to get into voiceover got into it. What do well, you isn't think? Isn't there always a wave? Well, <laughs> there's a wave sort now. Of. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's a rising tide. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and and of course we believe that a rising tide floats all boats. We want to be able. <laughs> we want people to be good at what they do because mm -hmm. when they, you know, if they they act unprofessional or they really don't sound professional or don't use those practices, it makes all of us look bad. You know, it's how many times, well, I don't want to work with the, you know, freelance people. I got to go to the studio. It's like, listen, you're, you, there are so many good people out in the world that can do this stuff that aren't necessarily, you know, you know, in, in LA or in New York or Houston or, or Dallas or, or Chicago or something like that <laughs> yeah. or <laughs> Canada. Yeah. We know a lot of very fine talents up, up in Canada. <laughs> I was trying to like thumb my booth. <laughs> it's like, I'm mirrored it's in right my here. video. <laughs> so. I know. And we're like, I want to look at Dan. So I have to go, the, I have to use every ounce of the, the reverse. I'm like, I know I want to look this way, but <laughs> yeah, I, I got to look this it's, way. It's, <laughs> I'm always doing the opposite. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what, what, what you, you were pointing to your booth there. What do you use? Yeah. Miss, Miss Techie in your booth. We want to studio? know about gear now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my gear is really, really simple. I Good. have, um, uh, <laughs> Steinberg, Steinberg UR 22C. I Very think nice. that's what it is. Uh, and, a uh, Sein Sennheiser 416. And, mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't have anything in between it or, you know, it all hooks into the computer and, Away I what go in the booth. Yeah. yeah. What's your software? DAW. I'm using Adobe Audition, the newest mm -hmm. version in the cloud. So it took yeah. a while, actually. I just replaced my computer um, at the end of 2020. And uh, How long were you using it before that? Oh, I was still on Windows 7. <laughs> so yeah. it was am, pretty old. I am too. I have a Windows 7 in parallels mm -hmm. on my Mac. I refused to upgrade it. <laughs> I really liked Windows Seven. I lo I loved it, but it yeah. was the I, it was about a five year old computer, mm -hmm. and and at that point it just got yeah. slow and unwieldy. And I was using uh -huh. Adobe Audition three point Oh yeah. And was I mean, that it hard worked, for you to make that? Because I know people that cling on to three Oh even now. Do you, was it a hard transition? To you know what? It was a lot less difficult than I thought it was going to be, actually. And the first thing that I did was I paid for that two-hour session with uh, Uncle Roy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because that, oh, my God, all of mm -hmm. the, the shortcuts and all yeah. of the little stuff that he told me, oh, my God, life-saving. <laughs> so if yeah. you are at all not sure about your Adobe Audition, uh, by all means, talk to, to Roy Yokelson, and he will set you straight. <laughs> Yeah, Roy's one of those guys that you know. He's an audio designer. It's what he does. Yeah, you know, and, and and he's he really good his, at it. Yeah. See, as as voice actors, we generally don't have to do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Adobe Audition, of course, has lots of features and lots of things that you know that you can you can automate and 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 things like that. But if you got a few hotkeys, just yeah, and you can roll through it really really quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just takes two seconds, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're keeping it simple. Yeah. And George and I are always, you know, preaching about that. And the fact of the matter is, is people keep hiring you and you're not using all this other outboard gear and things like that because mm -hmm. it's not meant for voiceover. Well, yeah. I mean, when I give my project audio over to someone, generally they're going to be working with it on their end. They don't need me to be working with it. Right. <laughs> as long as I give them clean audio, they're fine. <laughs> and they prefer it that way. They don't want me to ruin in post you know, before they even get their hands on it. So 
Yeah. I do it's, very minimal stuff, even for my auditions these days, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Here's an interesting one. Do you use paper or a screen to read? I you... use a screen generally. Yeah. Yeah, inside the booth, I have a, a screen uh, that's around 22 inches, I guess, yeah. something like that. Okay, open up your booth. Let's see what goes on in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'd have to turn on the, the light, but you can no, sort no, of see. No, no, we can see. see in there, yeah. Yeah, you can sort of see. So, so do you read off of a mirrored screen? Is it an exact yes. mirror of what's on your it's desktop? It's mirrored what's out here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. And I have um, a USB um, hub in there that's sort of from this computer. Yeah. And uh, and the the monitor is right up against this wall okay. in the corner there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm using a knee chair. You can sort of see the chair. Oh, there. the kneeling chair, oh, right. Yeah. Those yeah. Came, came and go. I mean, they seem to have come and gone, it, essentially. I've been but using those one for that, years. Those that love them will always love them, right? I just find it easier. I find it easier. It it uh, it keeps me stable over a long mm. period of time, and most of what I do, I do sitting. So, mm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, that wouldn't work for someone in animation, maybe, or video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not something I do, so yeah. I don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jody Krangel. If you got a question, we got a few questions coming in here. Throw it in the chat room because we want to hear from you. We like knowing you're out there. George, what's the first question we got here from Jim McNicholas? Jim asked, and he's on YouTube. He says, uh, so yeah, back in the day, those sites were great. Were you, were, uh, where would you find them today? I'm, he's referring to the sites that like you were voice, mentioning. You voiced on two, three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, voices. Uh, where do you yeah. find them today? I like less than, I also like the five minute jobs too. I, I do a few a day, but would love to be doing more. Yeah, um, it's, so. you know, it depends on what your personality wants you to do. <laughs> so a lot of people like reaching out. They like looking on LinkedIn and finding people who are creative directors or at ad agencies or video production companies or the like and reaching out to them directly. People do that with e-learning all the time as well. Um, the LinkedIn Edge, I believe, is Tracy Lindley's course. Oh, yeah. Well worth paying for, just to let you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, LinkedIn is a great place to find a lot of these people. And you can, what I say about LinkedIn is it's not a way to reach out immediately. It's a way to, um, stalk people <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> mm -hmm. just like in a polite way. <laughs> uh, so what you, what you do is you follow someone without connecting with them necessarily. You watch what they post, you comment on what they post, because when you comment, you lift up their algorithm and you help them. And you sort of get on their radar by being involved in what they're doing. And then eventually they get used to you, they respond to your comments, you have a discussion, and then it's a warm lead instead of a, a cold, hi, I'm trying to sell you something mm. thing which can get very annoying. And I'm sure a lot of these people get it all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I end up finding a lot of my guests for the podcast that way, actually, because there are a lot of audio branding professionals on LinkedIn who are all talking in the same vein about the same stuff. And so when I comment on one of their uh, posts, I end up reaching a whole bunch of other people who are also discussing this and want to discuss more. So. Yeah, it's just a great way to to reach out to people. So yeah, I would highly recommend LinkedIn. And you can do the research on LinkedIn and then reach out to them through their own website if you wanted to. But again, I would say follow them on LinkedIn, find out more about them before you do that, just because it's it, it becomes a little more of a warm lead than a cold one. Um, I know people do reach out on the phone, but these days you never know who's actually going to be in their office. So, you know, I, I, I don't know how well that'll work, um, but some people swear by it. So it really depends. Mark Scott has some great tips on reaching out and direct marketing. So I highly recommend anything from him. Yeah. Uh, go back and watch the episode he was on. Yeah. A while ago. I'm sure he had a lot to say about that. Yeah. He was Tom great. Deere is another person who knows a lot about this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, you could also reach out to him. But yeah, there are many different ways to do it. But I would say the if you can prevent yourself from just reaching out and saying, hi, I'm a voice actor, hire me. <laughs> uh, 
I, I think you should do that because there are other ways to do it and, um, and other ways that I think will put you in better stead with the people you're reaching out to. Excellent. A uh, question from Andrea Entz. It says, what was your first voiceover job? How did you get it? And what did you learn from it? Oh, my goodness. Uh, my very first job was actually a documentary, believe it or not. Wow. Um, it was a documentary on World War II, and it was a kind of a photo collage of this fellow who was producing it. His father was stationed in um, uh, Saipan during the Second World War, and he was taking Kodachrome film, photographs that mm. were in color at the time. And uh, the island of Saipan was honoring his father for and you know they were going over to saipan to actually um give over the uh photographs or copies of them for their um like a museum over there and there was a photograph that his father caught that was of a plane on the end of a dock and someone out in front of it and they think that it might have been, and I mean, it might have been disproven by now, but they thought it might have been Amelia Earhart's um, navigator. Mm. So they were sort of like, it was really, it was an interesting, really interesting documentary. And I mean, it's, I don't know where it is now. I mean, this was like 15 years ago, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I learned a ton. And uh, you actually, also, you one also learned that you like five minute jobs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't mind that one because it wasn't overly long. It wasn't hugely long, but you learn these as you go along. Yeah. Uh, in that one, I actually had a song that I had done for uh, um, uh, like a collaboration of a friend with a friend of mine in the UK, and we'd done a version of I'll Be Seeing You. And so that actually ended up playing at the end credits of that documentary. Hmm. So they ended up using that uh, that song for the end credits. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it just, it totally got me hooked. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, Jody's also a very fine singer. I mean, and you, professionally, you, you sing. I've heard you sing. It's absolutely great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, George? Grace Newton asks, and I know you covered this a bit, but you could expound maybe a little bit. Um, do you have a favorite or go-to way to market your business and what has worked best and what wasn't so fruitful? Maybe pick one more special, special thought because we talked about that quite a bit. You know, I sent out packages at one point um, for uh, National Chocolate Cake Day, and I had. Um, well, this was before I changed <laughs> oh. my branding. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I had um, I had pens and I had notebooks and I had a recipe and all of this stuff, and I sent it out and heard absolutely nothing back. So a lot of money spent and <laughs> yeah, absolutely no results as far as I know. <laughs> I know that um, feeling. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was pretty awful. Um, and I think I know why. I, I don't think that there was enough personalization in it because I didn't actually get to sign it because it was being sent from the US and most of my clients are in the US. That's that. So I was sending it to a lot of my clients. And I just really, I don't think it really hit them as being very personal. And mm. I think that might have been the problem. I think if we keep mm. it personal and real, that when you reach out to people, that they'll be much more likely to respond. Like it was a little so, too gimmicky in hindsight? I don't know gimmicky necessarily, but the card included had like a, a simulated signature. Do you know what I mean? Like it didn't actually oh, have okay. my... Because yeah. it was manufactured yeah. elsewhere, and yeah. I couldn't sign it. <laughs> so, right. mm -hmm. um, yeah, so lesson learned, right? Personal yeah. is better. Yeah, so do your homework before you send stuff out by yourself and make sure well, you know who you're writing to. I mean, I did do my homework. It was through someone else. Like, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just me. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, it, I think it just needed that one personal touch and i think it mm. would like if it had looked like it actually came from me i think mm. it would have made more of an impact yeah mm. yeah i I've, I've been using an email service to send important emails from brad newman's upper level crm mm -hmm. and when you send those emails they do come from you yeah 
and they and look they like they come opened. from you. And they do get opened. Yes. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Brad's um, amazing too. Yeah. yeah His service totally. is fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. We have a question here, apparently from somebody who's anonymous, is what was the Audio Innovators Award you mentioned before the show you were, we were talking about? Oh, that was oh. me. Oh, that it was, was you. Oh, you that. wrote Sorry. this question. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You <laughs> mentioned something about audio. Uh, yeah, what was the Audio the, Innovators just, Award? Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, International Sound Awards oh, yeah. are put out by the Audio Branding Academy in Germany. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just um, totally and, off my radar. That's why I was like really curious about yeah, it. Yeah. The fellow who was on my podcast, his name is Cornelius Ringe. It's R-I-N-G-E. He has a audio branding company called We Sound, and they're in uh, Berlin and Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And he and his um, music director, I believe, I think that's what Lars does, uh, Lars Ohlendorf, uh, they were on my podcast together, and he talked all about it. And yeah, it was really enlightening. <laughs> mm, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the name of the podcast again? So people can actually go hear that one? Sure. It's, it's called, called audio branding <laughs> and there it is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Audio branding podcast.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, you get the question from Jay Horace black there, George. Yeah. He's asking, well, he says you have lovely presence and energy. So I would agree with that. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. There was a few comments about your voice and your demeanor uh, in the chat. Did oh, you nice. find yourself testing out many other microphones before hanging, you know, going with the 416? Yeah, well, I was um, using, oh my goodness, can I remember what this is? I started with an NT1A when I mm -hmm. first started in the business, mm -hmm. and I found that it was just too cold for my voice. I didn't mm -hmm. like how I sounded on it. I used it for a number of years, but um, yeah. I, it was okay. It just wasn't yeah. really, you know. I think it's okay on a lot of people. You know, it's yeah. okay on a lot of people, and sometimes it's great, and most of the time it's just okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, and I have a TLM 103 in there mm -hmm. as well that I use for singing if I need mm -hmm. that. So that works well too. And of course the U87 is brilliant, but mm -hmm. I don't live in a pristine environment, even though I have the booth. So a yeah. U87 is way overkill. And on, I, I live in a townhouse complex, <laughs> so I can get rid of most everything when I go into that booth. It's fine, yeah. but it's not soundproofed. It's, it's sound treated. Mm -hmm. So I can't get rid of everything. And yeah. the 416 really helps with that, first of all, because it's very directional. But also I find that with the deeper voices, it really adds a little bit of presence. And I, I like that. I like that little bit of oomph that it gives my voice on, on a production so mm -hmm. yeah do you find yourself having trouble feeling comfortable singing in a very small dead booth actually no oh okay <laughs> i don't i mean i've done the on uh on stage performances as well yeah but um and that's a completely different environment and a completely yeah. different reason for singing really yeah. when you're doing studio stuff i i really enjoy it actually because it's very detail oriented you know you can and you can go back you know you don't have to record it all in one sequential thing you can go mm -hmm. back and redo little parts if you want as long as you know how to edit <laughs> do you monitor yourself in a totally totally flat dry sound in your headphones while you're singing do you not I actually monitor don't what use do you headphones do? while I'm yeah. singing? Usually, Good girl. if un, un, okay, when I'm when I'm doing <laughs> my listen. work, yeah. when I'm doing my work, I do not use headphones. Yeah. When I am singing and I need to hear a backing track, I do use headphones. Yeah. So so there's a difference. So um yeah, I guess it depends on how far up you turn the volume. Um, I want to turn it up enough that I can hear the nuances of my voice but I don't want to turn it too far down that I have to be screaming. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, no so there's a is... delicate nuance there. It's like a really yeah. delicate balance. It's either right or don't do it. Like yeah. take them off. Because if it's not quite right, it's going to drive you nuts. Well, I need but... them if I'm listening to a backing track, right? Yeah. Well, oh, absolutely. So, yeah. And, so I have to, you're... I just have to make sure I'm very conscious of how loud my earphones are. Well, you're one reason that you are, you are 22 is really is good and why i rec why i'm very picky about what interfaces i recommend is that i want them to have a monitor mix and that mm. knob has that that unit has that knob 
that lets you monitor, mix your monitoring. So you mm -hmm. can control exactly how loud you sound to the music or whatever you're listening to. Yeah. And I feel like that's an important feature that really helps. I can mix in Adobe Audition too. Like I can yeah. make a mix when I'm hearing the my mm -hmm. volume of audio and, and the music. Yeah. So if I'm multi-tracking in Adobe Audition, I can just mix it however I want it. So uh, yeah, of yeah. Course. yeah, either or. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Jody, it's been way too long since we've seen each other. And, you know, <laughs> is there's one thing I miss about the, the going to conventions? No hugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we miss that a lot. being together. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to uh, the next time we can get together. But we really want to thank you for coming on and talking with us tonight about stuff that perhaps people didn't really think about. So well, thank you so uh, much once, for inviting me. <laughs> yeah. Once again, what's the podcast again? Audio branding. It's at audiobrandingpodcast.com. Mm -hmm. I have clubhouse rooms that talk about the power of sound, 2 p.m. Eastern Wednesdays. So yeah. it's a club called The Power of Sound. If you look for it, you'll find it. There's a whole bunch of stuff scheduled in there. And actually, um, on 2 p.m. 2 p.m. on Thursdays, I have a room with Cheryl Halling and Anne Ganguza. And we talk about voices in podcasting. So basically the mix of those two things and one or the other, it's called VIP. And uh, that's also under the club, The Power of Sound. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to sign up right now. Yeah, that's to the power of sound. <laughs> like, like you don't I have anything to else to hear do, you George. There. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, thanks again so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun. All righty. All right. Thanks. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break here, and then we're gonna re rack it for for tech talk. Make sure you're around for that, and if you got questions, make sure you get them in there. But we'll be right back to wrap this hour up right after this. You're still watching VLBS. <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and lots of other really innovative tools for collaborating between different locations, different studios, bringing talent into the studio virtually, and having communication with the client also remotely and virtually, which is a, another big part of it. You know, it's not just about you as the performer. It's also how do we bring the clients in to hear that performance? And not just you, the whole mix, the orchestra, whatever is in that mix for that spot you're working on, for the client to sign off on it and spend the top dollar they're spending for you, your talent, the engineers, the production, the music, the, the composing, the writing, the direction, there's a lot that goes into it. They want to have an instant approval and hear exactly what it is that the final production will sound like. So that's another part of it. They're listening in on a web browser and hearing you through Source Live. It's, it's just an incredible array of tools. And it's just the reason they continue to be a very well-regarded tool in production for voiceover and really in anything audio. Um, but, you know, the one you're going to look for as talent is going to be Source Connect standard. If you hear somebody saying you need the pro version of Source Connect, yeah, there is a Source Connect Pro, but you're looking for as a talent Source Connect standard. And that's going to give you uh, the tool you need to connect with the big budget jobs. And you're, you're going to see it asked for by name. And that's what they're asking for. Sign up for a free trial. Go to source-elements.com and get up and running with it so you're ready to go when that opportunity strikes. Thanks, Source Elements. Let's get back and wrap it up. 
This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. Bye, I, Jody. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, it, was, it was great having her on. I haven't yeah. talked to Jody in a long time, and she is a master at what she does. She's and sharp. A yep. Very, very successful business lady and, and voice talent. So next week on this very show, if you tune in, if you watch, like watching our show, it'll be Tech Talk number 70. Three. So mm -hmm. uh, make sure that uh, you tune in for that, and uh, that'll be uh, next Sunday morning. I'll get that out to you. But if you want to watch live, if you want to interact with George and I, stick around. We'll be we'll, we're going to re-record that right after this. So uh, we would love to have your questions uh, for that. Uh, who are our donors of the week? And if you, by the way, I don't know if we've mentioned it for a while, but if you want to watch live, we are live at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Every other um, Monday. Every other Monday. So tune in to the website. Go to vobs.tv. Look and see when we're taping our next show and uh, and jump in and join us. Cause, uh, Absolutely. It's, 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 we really have fun having your questions here live with us. Donors, we've got them. Philip Sapir. Thomas Pinto. Shelly Avellino. George Whittam, your dad. The senior one. <laughs> Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Rader. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. And Trey, Trey Mosley. Mosley. All righty. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC Demos. Demos. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room tonight, getting all those questions to us. Uh, also, our amazing Sue Merlino, our technical director who gets it done every week. And, of course, thanks to Jody Crankle for joining us again. And most definitely, Lee Penny. <laughs> For just being the lead penny. Uh, that's going to do it for VoiceOver Body Shop this week. Uh, stay tuned live for Tech Talk. It's coming up. We want your questions. We got lots to talk about, so stay tuned for that. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. See ya. Have a good week.